So I know, um, I know you as an appraiser, you're, you're slow. <laughs> and normally this time of the year, we get a little slow anyway, around the holidays, Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, maybe even. And it seems like historically for me anyway, it's, it kind of remains that way till about February, somewhere in there. I don't know. Um, and I know you, you've got the stresses of dealing with that. You may or may not be celebrating the holidays and then some stress there, stress within the, the year. Stress, stress, stress. You're always full of stress. And I certainly recommend you find ways to release some of that. I'll tell you what I did uh, for some of my Christmas people. I'll tell you that when we come back. And I have a special guest on today I'm excited about. I think you'll be excited about. We'll get his perspective on what he's doing, maybe what he recommends, and maybe he can take a look in his crystal ball and give us some um, economic outlook for what's around the corner. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Brian Reynolds. You're listening to the Appraisal Update podcast brought to you as always by the very fine folks of Appraiser E-Learning. We hope you're hanging in there. I think uh, hanging in there would be a good <laughs> good spot right now. And uh, I'm excited to bring on my good friend, uh, Mr. Jamie Owen. Jamie, welcome to the program. Thank you for letting me on again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gl- always glad to have you here, my friend. Uh, so I kind of gave a little teaser. It was it was funny. Um, we had a little get together for my team, and uh, and we went and uh, did the axe throwing. And they did an escape room. I was a little late. I, I missed the escape room. And then we had them back to uh, one of my Airbnbs, and we cooked and 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 played games and did some different things. But uh, last year I tried to get. <laughs> Last year we did something similar, and I I tried to get him a, a bozo. Do you remember Bozo the Clown? I don't sure. Know. sure. Uh, so Bozo the Clown, you know, I had I have a little one. In fact, everybody don't don't move. Jamie, tell a joke while I'm gone. I'll be make it a clean joke. I'll be right back. Tell a joke. Sorry to put oh, you on the spot, Jamie, right. but tell a joke. I'll be right oh, back. Oh boy, that's all. let me think of something. Um... Man, I can't think of a good joke. Uh, how quick will the market bounce back? Well, what did the monkey say when he got his tail cut off? It won't be long now. That's your joke. Okay, I didn't. I missed it, so I'll have to. Joke. <laughs> I'll have to listen to this recording to hear the joke, but thank you. Uh, we we I didn't want to pause. I didn't, when we get on these podcasts, we like to go, and we don't like dead air, and we don't like to pause, and we, the thing we really don't like to do is edit. <laughs> so thank you for that filler. I'll have to listen to it when I come back. But anyway, I had bought a Bozo, and, uh, and when they opened it up, this was it. Uh, yeah, that's how big it was, <laughs> and I don't. How big is that? Um, so is a it? lot. Of, <laughs> I, I happen to have a tape measure here, so I'll tell you how big it is. Uh, so those of you listening and not not watching the video, maybe you ought to start watching because it's getting kind of silly. Uh, that is just under eight inches. Yeah, about seven and a half. So it's, as as my listeners might imagine, that's kind of tiny, right? The Bozo the Clown is a is a punching bag. And I was telling somebody about Bozo the other day. I'm like, you're too, too young. I'm like, no, I know who Bozo is. Uh, it's a punching bag, and it's set up to where you punch it, you know, and it falls back and then comes up, and you can punch it again, right? And I, <laughs> I accidentally got a little bitty one so this year i got a bigger one uh and it's the full size you know it's four foot tall or something like that and i said that's one way you can really stress you know you can go in there and say amc punch or or lender punch or brian punch or you know just a way to we we were talking about going to one of these rooms it it's like an anger room or a have you heard of those or, or a stress oh, yeah, release you Magic go in and break thing. stuff. You just start breaking. Stuff. And we ended up not doing that. Like somebody's going to get hurt. But I just bought another house and I had some of that. You know, I tore cabinets down over the weekend and 
poke toes through the wall and boy that is a good demo day is kind of a stress reliever now i cut one of the water lines off and the plumber told her said you know you need a key for the street because you don't have shut off valves on the uh, in the bathroom but i said on the kitchen there's shut off valves so i turned turned them off and she didn't believe me so i got the water going and i turned it off and the water stopped and turned the other water on turned it and it stopped so i cut one of the lines unhooked another <laughs> and uh, there was a line to the refrigerator the, for the ice maker and so i thought well i'm not going to cut it but i'll unscrew, so i unscrewed it and when i unscrewed that water it was shooting out everywhere Jay, shooting all over me all over the floor she's like put it back on i said you can't put that back on but there was a i turned that valve off and it went off i started laughing she said this is why this should be videotaped but anyway it was uh it was a lot of work it was it was a lot of manual labor but and i'm sore still but not only did i get a lot accomplished it 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 was a little stress reliever. So, Jamie, what do you do for stress relief? If you get all bent out of shape and worked up, which I don't think you probably ever do because you just seems like the happiest guy ever, but is there a way that you... I, <laughs> I do. I get bent out of shape. I ask my wife. Uh, but right. uh, I will go for a walk or uh, I, I've started running again, so that that's a good stress reliever. Yes. Or just kind of step away and, you know, listen to some music for a little bit just to kind of get my mind off of whatever it is that's upsetting me yeah. and it's usually something appraisal related something that irked me you know we always have that but it, it doesn't happen a lot but it happens so, yeah, yeah yeah no doubt so let's talk about that uh, one of our added stresses right now I suppose is you know we're in a completely different place this year than where we were last year you know last year about this time fannie mae made the announcement of ANSI. you know starting april 1st that that happened around december 15th this year but we were busy you know we had lots of work rolling in and and there are there are appraisers that are listening right now jamie who ever since they became an appraiser they've been so busy that they've literally just had to turn work away, right? They, they, that's all they've ever known since they've become certified. They have had a constant flow of work. They've never had to go look for work. They've had a constant flow of work to the extent where probably in many instances they were overworked and, and they had to turn work away. So this, this current environment that we're that we find ourselves in is completely foreign to some appraisers out there listening to this podcast so so number one what would you say to them i mean what are your thoughts behind our current economic climate with how it relates to us as appraisers yeah it's a that's a great question i think we all know it's going to be slow for a while i mean right now it's seasonally slow so we're that adds a little insult to injury but things will pick up a little bit in the springtime, for I think, in most places. But it's going to be a slow year. If you listen to all the experts and if, you know, just think about uh, what's transpired in the last couple of years and where we're at now. Um, as far as uh, staying busy with appraisal work, and now is a great time, I think, as a lot of uh, other appraisers have said, to, to sharpen up your skills uh, and to maybe pick up some new skills while there's the slow time. And I, I think it's also a great time to network with other appraisers uh, in, in your area that uh, maybe have a greater skill set than you have. Or, you know, in like my case, I'm certified residential, but I've uh, reached out to commercial appraisers in my area. And there's one that I've partnered with, you know, so if I get commercial leads in, I send them his way and he'll send residential leads my way. And, and that's been a nice uh uh, a nice situation too so plus you get when you connect with somebody you know that, that knows more than you it's a good way to learn uh and, and so i'd recommend reaching out you know if you're a residential appraiser reach out to a commercial appraiser in your area and see if you can uh, grab some new skill sets yeah you know that's a great idea and and you know i don't know if if all of the appraisers are aware of this or not um but you can actually pay or get paid um, for a referral. Yeah. 
So when you're, and, and you know, your arrangement may be, hey, I'll send you commercial stuff and you send me, um, you send me the residential stuff. That may be your trade-off. But I, I mean, I'll tell you right now, I, I do commercial work in Kentucky and Tennessee. If somebody calls me and says, hey, I've got a job down here, uh, I'll refer it to you. I will pay them a referral fee. I'm happy to do that. Now I'm going to get the job, get paid, and then I'll pay you. But uh, but otherwise, I wouldn't be getting that job. And USPAP allows that. USPAP doesn't say that you can't pay a referral fee. It simply says that you have to disclose it. So that's a huge opportunity. And I think I think it's many an opportunity that's been missed over the years. You know, again. People are busy. They're so busy. They can't see straight. They turn work around away and you get a call and say, Hey, can you do this commercial? No, I don't do commercial. Thanks. Bye. Right. And yeah. so as a referral, that's, that's an excellent opportunity. You know, I, I've gotten paid to do referral of real estate because I have my real estate license. So, uh, and as you said as well, maybe, maybe learn a new skill set. you know, one thing that, that I teach in, so I've got a course called Diversifying Your Practice. And the interesting, and I've had that course around for about three years or so. So it was well before we got slow. <laughs> and one of the very first slides, Jamie, says something like, if you're a residential appraiser and your focus is on mortgage finance transaction, whether it be a purchase or a refinance, and if or when the rates go back up, because they're going to go back up. I've been yeah. teaching that for th you know, three or four years now. And uh, so that slide wasn't made because of this current environment. It was made because I've been through this before. You've probably been through this before, right? And we're going to come out on the other side. I know the question is when, and we don't know that, <laughs> that answer. So what, what are your, do you think, do you think we're, we're settling in on this for, for the next year? I mean, what's your forecast for next year? Or you think, you think we'll start to spring back maybe after the first quarter or so? Boy, that's, that is such a difficult question. And I'm a horrible guesser, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but I, I think this, this whole, this whole next year is just going to be slow, but a lot of it's dependent on what the feds do with the rates. Sure. You know, a lot of it's dependent on that. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be dead. People are still buying and selling homes. And I think a lot of it is where you're located at, too. Uh, you know, some of the parts of the country that are less affordable, they're really taking it on the chin right now, you know, as far as prices coming back down. But other areas are are still pretty hot. In, in my market, it's like a mixed bag. Uh, I did an appraisal last week in a neighborhood with a lot. It's a high density area. A lot of rental properties and prices are still appreciating at 20 percent annually that's wow. taking into consideration price indexing active listings pendings it's still on fire but then uh 20 minutes from there in another neighborhood i was appraising uh the home that i was appraising that market segment was in decline by 16 percent annually and there are oh higher gosh. taxes so it's all it's just all over the place uh, it just depends on the, the type of home, the location. So it's it's really hard to to know. But I really don't think we're in for an 08 reset myself because there's there's so much wealth that has been built in over the last couple of years that if somebody you know couldn't afford to make their payment, they can put their home on the market. There's still a shortage of inventory, at least in my area. There's still a pretty good shortage of inventory in most neighborhoods. Now those inventory levels are coming up, but historically they're still low. So in areas like that, uh, we may not experience a as big of a, a correction or a reset. So but we just all over. We, we have the scarcity that you're referring to, you know, yes. the low inventory, but yet we still have pretty strong demand, don't we? We, we yeah, still we have. Do. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the economist told me uh, several months ago that, um, the millennials have, have surpassed the baby boomers, right? The baby boomers are no longer the, the largest generation on the planet. The millennials are, and, and millennials are buying houses or trying to buy houses in many instances. And so I think you're right. As far as the 08 comparison, I, I, I think the big difference there is, 
um, is there still a high demand? There's still a high demand for housing. But but let's shift gears for a moment. You know, Fannie Mae's talking about the new forms. They're coming out next year. Uh, so, so that'll be interesting. We'll learn a lot about that in the next upcoming months, I'm sure. Um, you know, the, there's been a big push for the property data collectors and the hybrids pr product. Um, appraisal waivers. Obviously a slowdown, which the slowdown should reverse at some point. We just don't know when. But what are what are what are your thoughts and what would be your response to somebody that says the appraisal profession's done, the residential appraiser's gone, it's over with, get out of this business, go do something else. What would you say to that person? I I would disagree uh, completely. I think that things are there. There's always been change in our, in our profession. And, and I've seen that since I got into the business back in the late 90s, 98, when I started, uh, there's always change, but there's still a need for skilled appraisers. Uh, I think that's going to be the case with mortgage lending. And it's definitely the case with things like litigation, uh, divorce work, tax appeal work, and all sorts of different kinds of work. So, the demand for appraisers is is going to continue but uh but i do think that we need to make sure that our skills are up to speed to be able to to provide a quality appraisal that's that's really supportable under scrutiny so what would be your recommendation to the appraisers out there that um you know they're they're they've got a little time on their hand on their hands so so what do you recommend you what do I do? What do they do? Uh, what do I do during this time? Do I go get a second job? Should I should I invest in some education and learn some of these additional skill sets you're talking about? What should the appraiser do right now? I I think it depends on how slow it is. Like if you if you can't pay your bills, you've got to you've got to figure out a way to pay your bills. And if you don't have any kind of savings, you know. If you, you got to figure that out. So you, you've got to face a reality there, right? Yeah, you can't just put yeah. your head in the sand. Sure, sure. But but, but what about what about trying to learn additional skills and 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 doing different things? Whether that be offering different products, like how many appraisers do you know that do restricted appraisal reports, or for that matter, oral appraisal reports? Not many just a small handful in my yeah. area and it's a huge opportunity it is yeah. a huge opportunity so you know i i think that if appraisers kind of think outside the box and it, it goes back to that saying you know working on your business instead of just working in your business yes. um you know i was i was speaking to someone um earlier and I said you know appraisers should get fired up this is an opportunity for appraisers to get fired up and come together uh, we were talking about the NAR and I said well they were brilliant from the perspective of if you join the board for the data which you got to join the board <laughs> then you're a member of the local and at the same time you're a member of the state and at the same time you're a member of the national you don't get a choice right they kind of make you pay those dues and and you're a member of all of it but as a consequence look Look at the, 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 the organization of that data, of that group and how powerful they are. And yes, for appraisers right now, you know, it's an opt in. You don't have to be involved in anything. But if you were to get involved, you can have a powerful force as well. Uh, and, and so I encourage appraisers, now's the time to help. Help shape your future, if you will. Get involved. You know, I go to so many of these meetings and conferences. I was at the Aero Conference. This is the group of folks that regulate you and I, Jamie. And and somebody said, well, we don't want appraisers here. And, and, and others were encouraging. They wanted appraisers here. And the person who said, well, we don't want appraisers here was with an AMC. And, and I said, well, why would you say that? Well, they regulate appraisers. Appraisers don't. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> They also regulate AMC. So are you saying AMC right. shouldn't be there? I don't think that's your thought. So appraisers should be there. Appraisers should get involved. And I, I promise you, if 20 appraisers show up, I don't care where you're at in the country, if 20 or 30 appraisers showed up at the next state regulatory board 
it'd get their attention. They'd be, oh my God, what is there a riot going on? What's going on here, right? Uh, we just want to see what y'all are doing with our money. It's our money, right? We, we want to make sure you're doing a good job. We want to be involved. We want to know what regulations that you guys are thinking about placing on us or, or what have you. It would get their attention. And that's how, how you can really get some things done. Yeah, and I, I appreciate the National Association of Appraisers, the NAA, uh, is is heavily involved in that, you know, so, and supporting all of us appraisers. And I appreciate uh, all of your your hard work as the president and being able to to do that. Well, I I appreciate the kind words, Jamie. You know, I uh, I got up and spoke uh, at Arrow. They were talking about appraiser ghosting again, which that's yeah. probably died since everybody's so slow. There's no ghosting <laughs> going on right now. That's probably that's probably died. That took care of itself. But you know, I was one of the one of the few appraisers that got up and and spoke and said, "Don't do that." You know, it would have been wonderful if we had 20 or 30 or 100 appraisers come up to the microphone and say, don't do that, right? Let's let's solve this problem in another way. Uh, but appraisers need to start showing up. They need to get involved. You know, it's, it's kind of the old saying, if you don't vote, don't complain, right? Uh, we, need to, we need to get organized. We, and I think we are doing better. Uh, but there's still a lot of a lot of road ahead of us that we we could do. Tell everybody about Jamie a minute. What do you do? Where are you at? Uh, how's your podcast and blogs and all that thing? Let them know. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm in uh, Brexville, Ohio, which is a suburb of Cleveland. So, and I've been here since '96. Uh, and uh, my podcast, Home Value Stories, I'm still chugging along with that. I've got an, uh, another one I'm working on right now. Uh, and in between, I've totally knocked off uh, our friend Dustin Harris. At a, I do like a quick cast, which is like a mini so I hope he doesn't mind me saying that. But I called him beforehand to see if that was cool. Uh, so I've got that going. And then the blogging, I, uh, my father-in-law passed away about a month and a half ago. Mm. And it, there's been a, you know, a lot uh, of family, uh, caring for family that uh, we've been involved in. So I've been a little slow in my blogs, but I've had some guest bloggers uh, that have helped with some content. But I'm looking forward to January, uh, getting uh, getting going with that with my own content again. So, uh, and I'm going to try to focus a little bit more on the market with some of my articles. I really haven't done that. And, uh, uh, Ryan Lundquist and Jonathan Miller, you know, they do such a great job with reporting on their markets and even Jonathan, you know, across the country. So I'm going to try to do a little bit more as far as uh, market updates go, uh, in the new year. So I'm looking forward to that, but that's oh, it. That's I'm a boots cool. on the ground appraiser, just pl chugging along like everyone else. Well, that, that's exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to hear more about that. And, and that's why I asked you to, to stop. Jamie was in my class earlier, and I'm like, can you stay around and do a podcast real quick? And that's, that's why, Jamie. I think that everybody relates to you so well. Not only are you one of the nicest people on the planet, you, you are a working appraiser. And, uh, and, and that's why I wanted to have you on because working appraisers like to hear from other working appraisers. And uh, I know I sure do as a working appraiser myself, I sure like to hear those perspectives. I mean, we can have the big shots on all the time, right? But it really is the boots on the ground appraiser that's getting the job done. And, uh, yeah. and, and I appreciate hearing from folks like you. Uh, and I know my listeners do as well. So thank you very much for carving out just a minute to, to hang out with me. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me on again. You know, Ohio, the, your Ohio coalition has just joined the National Association of Appraisers as a board of governors member. So, uh, I saw that. Charlie came out to the to the conference, and thank you, Ohio, for doing that. We're uh, we're looking looking for uh, great things at a as a collaborating uh, force, and uh, and I think they even were talking about they'd love for us to have a conference in Ohio at some point. So who who knows? We we. We may be doing that. I know Hal, uh, Hal and I are trying to get this road show kicked off again. And one of the stops we talked about doing is uh, is maybe around Cincinnati. So we might be coming up uh, real soon. So thanks for being here, my friend. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to that. Very good. You've been listening to the Appraisal Update Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Reynolds. And I'm just going to give a little shout out to... Boy, that looks horrible, doesn't it? There. No. There. 
it's hard to do this on screen, Jamie, especially with that. So I know you guys can't see that. It says Santa's Trees. Uh, my business partner, Mr. Jim McLeod, has various lots around the great state of Tennessee, uh, in particular of the Nashville area. And this doesn't look right with headphones on, but this is all you get. So I, I want to put a little Santa Trees up there. If you haven't got your tree yet, go get it. Uh, time is running out. And uh, Brian Reynolds wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas and uh, Happy Holidays. Until next time, please be safe. Make lots of money. Go drum up some business. Shake the trees a little bit. Go earn it. You can do it, guys. We're going to get through this. Just hang tight. Until next time, I'm your host for Jamie Owen, Brian Reynolds. Happy appraising. The Appraisal Update Podcast is brought to you by Appraiser E-Learning.